19 May Somaliland Independence Day celebration hosted by the large and ever-growing Welsh Somaliland community. My name is Siham Arwa and I will be your host for the celebrations. We have some incredible speakers with, with us today, as well as cultural performances that showcase the rich history and culture of Somaliland. So that we can get the most out of today, it's very important that things run as smoothly as possible and timings are kept to as best as we can, inshallah. There will be a 20 minute break at 6 p.m. for the Asr prayer, as well as refreshments, just to highlight the fire exits which are located to the right hand side. If you do hear any fire alarms, please safely leave the premises as there are no scheduled fire drills. So without further ado, we'll begin today with a Quran recitation with translation in both English and Welsh. Um, so the first of our many speakers are, is Jane Hunt, the current social justice minister, if everyone can give her a warm welcome. Well, Noswaithar, good evening. It's really great to be with you to celebrate Somaliland Independence Day and to follow um, my colleague Vaughan Gethin um, to give you my greetings and to meet so many distinguished people here, friends, colleagues um, from Wales, from the Somaliland dis dis diaspora in Wales, but also from Somaliland. And great that you've all joined us here. Uh, and it is a wonderful place you have chosen to celebrate um, the great Somaliland Independence Day, Day here in our Welsh Parliament, here in our centre, in our Senate, the centre for Welsh democracy. It's so wonderful that you're here. So just a few words from me as Minister for Social Justice. It's incredible to think that the first links between Wales and Somaliland date back to, they date back to 1870, when people escaped persecution in their homeland and travelled to work in Cardiff. Here in, in Cardiff, uh, Cardiff Docks as we called it now, out of Cardiff Bay. In fact, the first Somali community in Europe was founded here with Somali seamen setting up home in Tiger Bay, having come here from the coal bunkering port of Aden. And you know this history so well. The Somaliland community, which is Wales' largest African diaspora community, has done a lot of work to promote peace, to promote growth and development in Somaliland itself. That strength of support and connection is, is powerful. Um, but the next speaker is Councillor Saeed Ibrahim, who is the Labour Councillor for Butte Town and made history as the first Somali councillor in Cardiff. So give him a warm welcome. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much, all, um, everybody here. I first of all would like to thank the young people who've, who've been working so hard for the past three months in putting poems and um, ripping poems up and starting again, and also the delegations that came all the way from Somaliland. Um, if I start with myself, um, I, 32 years ago, it was a different story for me. I was probably similar age to these young ladies um, and boys, and um, I was born in Somaliland, um, and this um, sort of celebrations was nowhere to be seen. We had um, planes taken off, We've had people being taken from their properties, being killed. Um, so for, my, for what I've known from Somaliland, it's a different story to the people that's here today. So but first of all, I'd just like to take this opportunity for 32 years to, to enjoy peace and stability is something to be thankful for and is not to, to, be, to be taken lightly. And it's very, very important that we take every day as a day of to, to, to keep and keep together and togetherness and making sure that democracy thrives in Somaliland. We take it lightly and it can easily go back to where it came from. Um, but if I just talk about briefly myself, and you know, I was elected 2017 in this ward in Butte Town, and you know, growing up, I you know, was a young lad from Cardiff. Um, I didn't want to join politics, but you know, there was a reason why I, I wanted to join politics, because I wanted to make a difference in the ward that I grew up in, the people that look like me, and then got elected in 2017. I chaired the Race Equality Task Force, um, which then sh shaped Cardiff Council. Um, we, you know, we can all, from the outset, say we need change, we need change, but you cannot make a change for being on the outside. You have to be inside to make that change. And when Sami and I decided to kind of put this event together, we wanted it to be a young people's event. Because if we don't 
give these young people an opportunity, there will not be leaders coming through. That we will not be in this position in 10, 20, 30 years' time. And we'll move along then to our next speaker, who I'm sure everyone here knows, um, Alan Michael. He was a member of the Welsh Parliament from 1987 and served for over 20 years. I hope that's correct, but there's a very long and extensive Wikipedia page which I was looking over. Um, Alan's now the South Wales Police and Crime Commissioner and shares a long history of mutual support with the Welsh Somaliland community. So if we can welcome Alan. Well, thank you very much indeed. It's vaguely right. It's yeah. fine. Um, uh, can I thank Saeed uh, for the speech that um, he's just given? Uh, because I think he's absolutely right. The focus on young people, the focus on the future. Uh, and as somebody who came here uh, during the period of the hidden war uh, and the devastation in Somaliland uh, and is now a leader uh, in Cardiff, given indeed by Hugh Thomas, uh, the leader of Cardiff Council, the responsibility of leading uh, the group looking at equality within our communities in Somaliland, which is why I wanted to uh, follow Jane in referring to that really important day yesterday uh, and endorsing the importance of that uh, commitment. The uh, cause of uh, Somaliland's independence, of course, uh, has one big thing missing, recognition. I find it unbelievable that for 32 years, when many, many countries in Africa, across the world, in Europe, have failed to maintain democracy, that important element that Said underlined a few minutes ago, and yet Somaliland has maintained it, has seen leadership pass, uh, from individuals of one party to another, uh, peacefully. Um, we saw America struggle to manage that only a year ago, um, and yet Somaliland has managed it. It's sometimes been a bit tricky, let's be honest about it, but it's been achieved. That makes Somaliland worthy of respect everywhere in the world and worthy of recognition. If you go back be before 1991, of course, Somaliland and its fate was already something we were con conscious of here in Cardiff. Um, uh, I became the Member of Parliament for Cardiff South and Penarth in 1987, uh, and there were al already issues in terms of people coming to seek refuge. Comment has been made of uh, 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 Wales and of Cardiff being uh, places of uh, refuge. And the hidden war had caused devastation in Somaliland. And as the new MP, uh, my case lists were absolutely full of Somali landers um, and included people who came and have made such a contribution over the years since then. So Somaliland was already at the top of my agenda uh, that long ago. But so many people came, and there are many in this room, as refugees. And frankly, I hate to think what it would have been like if those events had happened now with the way in which the United Kingdom has gone back on many commitments nationally, but not in Wales, to the way in which people are treated when they are the stranger, when they come to our shores, uh, when they are looking for help as a result of problems in their own uh, lands. Um, I'm also absolutely delighted that we have Edna Dan with us. Um, Edna, you've been an inspiration to so many people. Um, I, I was delighted uh, in 2008 uh, to be able to not just meet you in Cardiff, uh, which I'd already done, but to uh, meet you uh, in your own hospital in Hargeisa, uh, which has been such an inspiration for many years. Uh, and of course, you've balanced uh, the importance of medicine and the support of mothers in particular, and education, uh, gaining the university accolade 
uh, for that institution. Uh, you uh, inspired the work uh, for caring of expectant mothers uh, in Somaliland, as you had previously in your World Health Organization uh, days. Uh, and you also uh, inspired people uh, as an authoritative African voice uh, speaking out against female genital mutilation. I thank you, as we must all thank you, uh, for the inspiration that you've given through those years. You <laughs> woman of many parts because she became Foreign Secretary then. Um, uh, and I was pleased to host you in the House of Commons uh, when you came as Foreign Minister. But of course, we now have this current Foreign Minister with us as well, uh, Dr. Essa Kaid Mohamud. Uh, it's, a, it's a pleasure to welcome you here, sir, uh, and uh, to in, endorse and underline uh, our support uh, for the uh, uh, future of Somaliland. Uh, I know that Stephen Doughty, who succeeded me as uh, Member of Parliament, uh, is equally supportive and equally passionate uh, in support of the Somali community here and in Somaliland uh, and would have liked to have been uh, with us this evening. So um, it's a pleasure always to be invited to events uh, organised by Somaliland because there's so much good humour. Uh, but you're breaking with tradition today because we're, we're on time. What happened? Uh, and that, that, that I, I thought we ought to celebrate that as well. Um, thank you very much indeed for the invitation to be with you uh, and to speak this evening. Uh, thank you for making this such a joyous occasion. Thank you. Thank you very much for that, Alan. I think the um, topic of recognition is a really important one and hopefully we all live to see the day that we are recognised. Um, the next part I'm actually going to pass along to Shahed to present this part of the um, evening. So if I can welcome Shahed. Okay, um, Prinhanda everyone. Um, I'm so excited to be here and to present a topic that, um, a celebration that I'm so passionate about. Unfortunately, I've only been given about five minutes, otherwise you guys would have been here all day and you wouldn't have gone home. So that's that. And um, also I'm just super excited because I'm here in front of one of my personal heroes, which I ironically did a lesson on today, Edna Adam, so they will be so excited <laughs> to hear about that today. And Islam alaikum, um, everybody. So, I'm just here to give a brief history on the Republic of Somaliland, my beloved home and um, somewhere that I care about so much. Um, and to celebrate 418 May today, for those of you that are here and are just learning about Somaliland or don't know too much, I have just got a brief um, profile information. I wish I could include everything, but here we go. So, Republic of Somaliland. So Somaliland is located in the Horn of Africa and um, declared its independence on the 18th of May 1991. So though it's not internationally recognised, and we are fighting every day for that recognition, we, it has demonstrated a remarkable resilience and stability since its declaration of independence. It is a beacon of hope in the region often marred by conflicts and political unrest. Despite the challenges it has faced, Somaliland has succeeded in establishing democratic institutions, maintaining peace, and fostering socio-economic development. Just as a quick country profile of Somaliland, I have put together. So our government type is a presidential republic um, run by the Kulmiya party, and our president is Musa Bihi Abdi. Our uh, currency is our dinam is Somaliland, and our currency is Somaliland shillings. Our capital is Hergesa, and some of our major cities are Hergesa, Bur'a, um, Las, An Las Anod, Erigabo, and as such. And Borama. <laughs> Somaliland recognizes this pivotal role of education in empowering its people and shaping its future. 
The nation has prioritised investment in education, ensuring access to quality and learning opportunities for all. Universities and vocational training centres have been established to equip the youth with knowledge and skills, fostering innovation and nurturing future leader leaders. Education serves as a catalyst for social progress and economic growth in Somaliland. One of its defining characteristics of Somaliland is its unwavering commitment to democracy. The nation has established a robust democratic system, which includes fair and free elections. The elect electoral processes have been transparent, allowing the citizens of Somaliland to exercise their democratic rights. A fun fact as well, Somaliland was the first country in the world to use the Iris Biometric Voter Registration System to ensure a fair and free transparent electoral process. Moreover, Somaliland embraces a multi-party political system, enabling diverse vo voices and fostering political participation for all. The relationship between Somaliland and Wales is a testament to the power of international solidarity and cooperation. It showcases how distant regions can come together, bridge gaps, an example of which is today, we are all here to celebrate 18 May, something that I've always dreamed of as a child and also so lovely to see so many children to be able to celebrate so freely and openly within the Senate today. It showcases how distant regions can come together, bridge gaps and work together towards shared goals. This partnership shares, shares, sorry, serves as an example of how collaboration and support can contribute to the progress and well-being of nations, even in the absence of formal recognition, which we will fight for and we will get, inshallah, and we will be able to see together. <laughs> Um, so, uh, we'll have one more speaker, I keep saying that, I promise it'll be the last, um, and then we'll have a break. But this one is one that you'll, I'm sure everyone will be really excited to listen to, because we've got Professor Reid Ali Ahmed, who has worn many hats in his career, including a university lecturer, senior director, researcher, trainer and consultant. So if we can give him a warm welcome. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, I really like to highly commend the organizers of this uh, you know, event, Samia, Muna, Zainab, all of them, and we are glad you know, our you know, young generations, particularly the ladies, you know, are organizing this. It is something which gives us motivation, because me, we have been this for a long time, and now I think we need a new ballot. <laughs> because, you know, when I, I go back to this, it was 1979 when we started, you know, about the injustice Somalia faced, you know, with the unit, uh, unification with Somalia. How many of you know about UFO? They are, the young. Do you know about UFO? Abdurrahim, who was speaking here? Do you know about UFO? Abdurrahim. Okay. Barwani, your uncle. I worked with him five years. And I was a consultant. And I know him very, very well. And he did a good job. And now he's an ambassador in Kenya. Thank you very much. Uh, I will speak now about little background so that people will understand, you know, where we are coming from and why we are here today. Somaliland Protectorate, a British colony for nearly eight years, became independent 60 years, 63 years ago. However, it gave up its freedom within days when it received its independence from Her Majesty government on 26 June 1960. The Daily Herald newspaper reported on 29 June 1960, after four days of freedom, this British outpost will surrender its sovereignty and merge with its sister Somalia. It has decided not to remain in the Commonwealth, and now it has become an area of historical significance. That was 1960. And the reason is that it is merger with Somalia is unique. Somalia itself 
It's not yet freedom. That was 29, 1960. June, amazing. That was reported. Therefore, if you go back to this paper, and we say from that day up to today what has happened, it's amazing. I was very young at that time. I was in the elementary school, and I remember. You know, but from that day up to now, I am in that history. You know. If we go back to the Somali unity, with Somalia resulted 31 years of social, economic, and political marginalization. Bondage, humiliation, massacre of civilians, and the summary execution with death of toll of 80,000, mass arrests, brutality, rape, unfair, harsh prison conditions, systematic pattern of torture, and policy of discrimination and genocide. These atrocities committed by General Siad Barre as well as documented and the carnage during these years, 1981-1991, is known as the hidden war in Somaliland, which was coined by who? Alan Michael. <laughs> Amazing. Was coined by Alan Michael that the hidden war in Somalia, in Somaliland. In July 1988, July 1988, when they unmasked, when he unmasked, when he unmasked the atrocities of General Siad Barre against the Somaliland people in a unique debate at the Somaliland and UK Houses of Parliament. And that was July 1998, and some of us went to there with Alan and Abdi Karim was one of them, I was one of them, and there were three elders who are not with us today. Yeah. I mean, when I say they are not with us today, they die, they are not living. That's history as well. And it will come out and we'll write more about it. Okay, the people of Somalia learned the hard way about their f fatal mistake in rejecting their freedom in 1960. A lot of distinguished politicians, academicians, researchers, and commentators, and also journalists across the world are calling on the international community to be realistic about the drastic mistake made when Somaliland and Somalia were united. They strongly and with conviction argued that Somaliland and Somalia could not form one government even if Somalia manages to reach peace and stability, because they didn't reach yet. The two countries, Somalia and Somaliland, are completely two different entities with different systems due to two, due to two different legacies of colonialism. That matters. I was educated by R.R. R. Darlington. He's a British guy, and I did my GCE from London University, and I was in the Eton school, in Sheikh Secondary School, the best of the best. We didn't know about Muqdisho. At the same time, I knew more about Cardiff. I was young. Why? <laughs> Not only my teachers were British, but I have a family here. And I have my aunts, my uncles, they were in Cardiff. My father was a businessman. And when they sent the money, they used to send it to my father. To, to my father. My father was illiterate, but he used to say, son, write this letter to your relatives back home and say, we get the money, we receive it, and we pay. That's how I knew about Cardiff. I didn't know about Mogadishu. OK, it is a bit <coughs> a history. OK, in 2003, the high credible based, a Brussels-based lobby organization, International Crisis Group, issued a comprehensive report on Somaliland, democratization, and it is discontent. The report stated Somaliland democratization renders the prospects of reunification with the rest of Somalia increasingly improbable, not only because the aspiring states' political institutions have little common with the kinds of interim functional arrangements like to emerge in the South, but also because Somaliland leadership is becoming more accountable 
to it is electorate, the majority of whom no longer desire any form of a, association with Somalia. The right of self-discrimination enshrined in the Charter of the United Nations and the International Convention of Human Rights it states that all people have the right of self-determination and by fair view of that they are free to determine their political status to pursue their economic, social, and cultural development. It is unfortunate, unfair, that the international community has thus far refused to recognize Somaliland as an independent state, ignoring the achievements of Somaliland people and their shining example of homegrown democracy, which is rare in many countries of the world. We, as Alan said, even in America, they had a problem. You know. <laughs> we believe this grossly unfair and violation of basic human rights of the people of Somaliland, who have struggled to build a stable and peaceful democracy with limited external assistance to be recognized as a sovereign state. In the last three decades, Somaliland has built a reputation for stability and democracy with five executive, with five, sorry, with five successive presidents elected and a smooth transition of power. Nevertheless, Somaliland has not yet gained recognition and the international community, although it has received project aids from UK and other countries. The position of Somaliland contract, contracts starkly with that Somal Somalia, which does have international recognition, but which partly functions as a state and function under Chapter 7 of the United Nations. It is injustice and discrimination that Somaliland, Somaliland people facing are being kept hostage by the international community for the sake of Somalia, which has been unforgivable for three decades and continue, continue to be protected by United Nations you know, personnel and army. Under the international law, Somaliland people decided in, in a referendum 31 May 2001 that they wanted to regain the freedom they rejected 60 years ago. Without recognition as an independent country, Somalia will not receive the international aid development and, its, and investment is badly needed. The case of Somalia should remind the freedom-loving countries to appreciate and value the democracy and equality and they strive for and have striken over decades. Peaceful and freedom-loving Somalia people deserve no less. I just want to <coughs> come back to the connection between Somaliland and Wales. I was a student in here in 1971. That's a long time ago. I was the only student, Somali student here in the university. And my <laughs> uncles and all and the Somaliland community, you know, seamen, they used to say to me, why are you studying? There's a ship here you can go and you can get money and get married and you know, why are you studying? Anyway, <laughs> since 1971, this is my second home. And through that, if I look 1971 up to now, <laughs> that history, 1971 up to now, it's more than half of my life. I'm a Welsh, you know. And if I go through that, Still, I have the ban account when I was a student in 1971. Still, I have with that was bank. It was here, just here. Just that bank account, if you go to my file, amazing. A student, city bank manager, lecturer, refugee, and I was <laughs> when I became <laughs> 30 pounds a week. Then, Alan was there, and he helped me a lot, you know. In fact, I became, again, I couldn't get a job in the banks, and that's discrimination. I applied, and Alan knows, and I applied to the banks, and I get two interviews, and one interview, they said, oh, no, we don't have anything for you. Another one, then I said, okay, I'm applying a job, which is lower, because I was a manager in Citibank. I have all the degrees. Then I said, okay, just a clerk. 
just I want to get in. And I get the interview. And then the panel, they said, you are overqualified. <laughs> That's when I gave up. And I said, what's your discrimination? That's what I became to know what discrimination is. Then I changed in my route. I became a lecturer. I became a qualified teacher, a community worker. And that's how and Alan knows a lot. Also, where's Jane? Where, where's Jane Hutt? Jane Hutt, she left. We worked together in the voluntary sector. You know, with Jane Hutt. And we did a lot together. Then what I became, I am the founder of the Wallace Refugee Council. And I was the director. Do you know the day we launched that? When Nelson Mandela was released from prison, we launched it at the county council. And Alan and other, you know, uh, Gaina Legal and Barry Kitson and everybody helped us, you know, Julia Morgan, everybody was involved, you know. I became the director of the Welsh Security Council. I became advisor to the Welsh Assembly, <laughs> consultant for a year. In Wales, in Wales, there was no World Refugee Council. I created that. I established that. And at the same time, I established the policy of resettlement of refugees in Wales. That was 1990. I was the one who implemented and instrumented. If I go to the streets now, I can meet a Congolese, <laughs> Sudanese, Eletarian, Hello, Ed, how are you? Because I help many of them. Anyway, I want to conclude with the... Now we have our country, as said by many people, and what is, what has, that video, you, sh you are, look at it. We have the freedom, we have the democracy, we have everything. But at the same time, yeah? Why? But at the same time, we have the peace, and we have everything, and we have also, all the resources to be tabbed. What we need is skills. We need, you know, skilled people. That's why we want the young people to study very hard, to go home, to exploit this. And at the same time, what do we need from Wales? Wales is famous for the sheep, the lamb, Welsh lamb. We have so many, you know, sheep in Somalia. You help us you know, to improve the health of our animals as well, but also the Welsh Assembly, I mean Welsh Government, and also the County Council help us in the development in the public sector. And I made presentation to Jane Hutt and to others, and I will share with you that we already, and Alan knows, Thank you very and much. that's what we need from them. Um, thank you, Sami, for that. Um, so we'll carry on with the program. And next up, we have Dr. Issa Kay, who currently serves as the Somaliland Minister of Foreign Affairs. So if you welcome him to the stage. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm so honored to be here. What a pleasure. I mean, this is the first time I've been this part of the world. I'm impressed with the presence of you guys and how you intermingle very well. And uh, look at the kids you've raised and you taught them how to be attached to their culture, to the religion, and while at the same time being residents, citizens of this beautiful place. Uh, today is an important day in our history. Today is May 18. Happy 18 to all of you. I cannot help, but I have to remind you how we get there. I want to remind you how this beautiful flag that you are branching today came all, and it was not easy. Believe me, it was not easy at all. I want to tell to these young people what happened maybe to your grandfathers, to your mothers, fathers, sisters, 
uh, back then uh, during the regime of Siad Barre. When in 1988 or so, we refused to be part of Somalia. We wanted to claim back our country because we're much better than them, the other side, the other part. The journey was long. We have been bombarded by the military. People were killed. Mass assassination, mass graves, rape. Everything that could be done to a human being was done to the people of Somaliland. And that's why today we remember who we are, we celebrate who we are, and this country is so dear to us because we paid a lot for this. Back then, when the uh, me and the uh, bombardment was happening in Hargeisa, your parents, grandparents fled Hargeisa, but the army was continuing bombarding them. They walked all the way to the Ethiopian border. It was hot. They had no food. There was elderly, youngsters, men, women, sick. Anybody was, everybody was fleeing the country to find shelter somewhere else. I remember a gentleman telling me that he has to push his parents on a wheelbarrow to cross the border. And when we, they used to uh, hide during the day and walk during the night. Because during the day, the military will see them and will bombard them and kill them. So hundreds and thousands of people were fleeing and going towards Ethiopia. When they reached the border, Ethiopian border, there, because we came from a pastoral society. They've been greeted, greeted by their family members, the clan men, and there, there was a mini feast because at least we could eat, we could sleep, we could have some water. So life was changing a little bit. They ended up in refugee camps. They left everything behind. Um, our next speaker is a woman who needs no introduction. We're honoured to have Edna Erlen here today. Edna was the first foreign, uh, female foreign minister of Somaliland, as well as the director and founder of the Edna Erlen Maternity Hospital of Hergesa, which currently has over 200 staff and over 1,500 students. So if everyone could give her a warm welcome and welcome her to the stage. Hello everybody, thank you, I'm so, thank you, I'm so emotional, uh, you're lucky because my speech is going to be short, because I'm so emotional, I'm so happy and so proud to be with you today and to see what wonderful, wonderful children you have brought to this event today. Um, well, I'd like to... Um, tell you a little, bit about, a little bit more about my country. Today is not our Independence Day. It's the 32nd anniversary of our separation from Somalia. Because Somaliland, former British Somaliland Protectorate, gained its independence from Britain on the 26th of June, 1960. So, the independence of my country was 63 years ago. But we're celebrating our freedom. We're celebrating 32 years of peace, stability, and democracy in my country, my beloved country that I love very much, Somaliland. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And I think I should say that um, Although I'm part of the Somaliland delegation, 
I have to say I am here today welcoming you to my home town, Cardiff and Newport. You know, I, it is, as I said, it was emotional, extraordinarily emotional. It was wonderful. I'm so proud to listen and to experience uh, our children and the innovative way that they have presented Somaliland to us. Let me just say, if you think that you're in Wales and maybe you will not have the opportunities to become who you want to become or do whatever it is that you want to do, let me be an inspiration to you. I came to Wales from Somaliland in 1964 and I suppose you're looking at saying 64 now that, how, how old does that make her I was 62 this month when I came here I came here because my father came before my father was in the Second World War with the Navy the British Navy he came out of retirement to fight again with the British Navy in the Falkland War. And I am so proud that I take my father's medals with me in most places because I want the UK to know that it's not just talk when we say that Somalilanders have contributed to the UK and Wales. This is living proof. The Wales that you see today and the UK that you see today was built on the backs, the brains, the physical strength of the Somalilanders who came before us. And they can only do that if racism is abolished. And that can only come, only come, if we work together. So I can say with whole heart, with Samia, Muna, Zainab, and all the wonderful young ladies here who have worked so damn hard, united we stand. Bushra, Samia, come here, sweetheart. I get emotional so, sometimes, so you'll have to bear with me. Where's Zainab? Zainab, come here. Come, Mona. Where's Mona? Come here. Come on, girls. Come here, Zainab. I know you're always embarrassed. Get here. Intisar? Where's Intisar? Intisar? No one. Where is Intisar? What? Intisar? Intisar, come here. No what? Where's No what? Come on. No what? Come on. Come on. Zainab Sahra, where's our girls? Where's our girls? Safiya Smail, Halimo, come here. These, these are, these are the young girls, the backbone of Wales. Alan, these girls were born, brought up in Wales. They are the backbone of Wales. These are the girls that, whose shoulders these young girls and young boys stand on. Without them, this event would not have happened, and many others. And without them, these wonderful children would not be able to come here, stand up, and show what they are worth and what they're made of. So please stand up, raise your hands, and clap for the Iron Ladies of Somaliland. United, we stand. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Um, pronoun da. Good afternoon, good evening. Um, I want to thank um, United to Change for inviting me to talk today. 
um, and I would like to welcome the distinguished guests from Wales and Somaliland. My name is Dr. Ahmed Ali. Um, I'm a New Newportonian, like my sister Fatima and Zainab. And um, you can see my quick biography there. Moved to my father, Ali Awnur al Rahma, was one of the first um, Somalis in Newport, along with his brother, my uncle, Hassan Awnur al Rahma, two brothers. Um, at that time, Newport was a community of seamen, uh, Somalilanders, and Yemenis. Um, my siblings, we all became scientists, believe it or not. Um, my two brothers and my sister became biochemists and chemists. Um, I went to study in Liverpool, and then I became a pharmaceutical chemist for 17 years. During that time, my hobby was herbal medicine. And in the year 2000, I was offered a job, um, a career, doing my hobby, which is herbal medicine. And I've been doing that for the last 23 years, getting paid for what I love. And, in a, and you can tell I love my job because I've got five international patents granted, all based on plants from Somaliland. Hopefully there's a few youngsters left, so I want to inspire any potential scientists. If I can convert one person today, I've done my job. You can't talk about frankincense without talking about history. This is the biblical land of Punt. This is where the ancient Egyptians said they originate from, the land of Punt. Where is the land of Punt? It's to Somaliland. Um, that building you see there is Deir El Bahri, Sebes. In that building, you got beautiful pictures like those that you can see there, which shows you the king and queen of Somaliland, Ati and Perhu. How do we know that this is Somaliland? If you look to the right, you can see a frankincense tree. The frankincense tree was the most prized commodity 2,000 years ago. Frankincense, gold and myrrh. Frankincense and myrrh were worth more than gold. I gave a BBC one hour um, program two years ago on Boxing Day telling the world just this. So the world now knows where frankincense comes from. That is another validation to how important Somaliland was 2,000 years ago. An ancient Greek mariner wrote a book called The Privilege of the Rithian Sea. If you look at all those dots, he's talking about all the major trading routes during the spice trade. Look how many dots there are on Somaliland and Somalia. They thought that the ancient spices came from Somaliland, right? They, they used to call us the land of cinnamon as well. They didn't know that we went to India to collect these spices. Somalis were like the Phoenicians. We were very secretive business traders. We're still the same. We're very secretive people, but we're the best business people. Somalis were the richest people on earth. How do I know? The country opposite it, Yemen, was called Happy Felix by the Romans. Happy because they were rich with frankincense. Where did that frankincense come from? Somaliland. So we must have been even richer. Today I'm going to talk about the medical uses of, of Somali frankincense. Um, I thought I was going to have a five minute slot, so I'm only going to talk about frankincense. But I'm a serial inventor. I've invented medicines based on myrrh. I've got the first international patent for the use of Somali myrrh in cancer. Um, I've got the first patent for the use of Habak Hadi which is a Popanax. It looks like myrrh, but it smells like perfume. I've got a patent for the use of that and its chemicals in cancer. I've got a patent for the use of myrrh as a pesticide in your garden. So if you want to ward off your slugs and snail, your mollusks, 
I've got a, pro I got a patent. It is better than today's B&Q bestseller. My PhD was on that. I've got a series of patents, but it's expensive business having patents. You can't commercialize everything. So the one patent that I'm trying to commercialize, inshallah, this year is this one, and I'm going to tell you about this one. Those are the different areas where you can find frankincense. Ethiopia, Somaliland and Puntland, and Oman, and India. Now, this is my invention back in 2006. A biologist came up to me and said, Ahmed, you're always working on plants, the anti-cancer of myrrh, etc. We've seen your publications. Could you give me four plants to test in inflammation? I said, yes, okay. I gave her Bayo, which you all know, this four in Somaliland. I gave her Meidi, which is your chewing gum, frankincense. I gave her Malmal and I gave her Habakhadi. To our surprise, the two that haven't been reported in the world came out the best. That one in the middle, those four samples in the middle that look clear, is, is Meidi. That's the frankincense that you chew. The other ones on the right is Oman frankincense. Very similar to Bayo. Like in Wuhulayah, you'll break your teeth if you eat it uh, as a chewing gum. The one on the right is Ethiopian frankincense. Now, if you look at that physical properties, it looks so different. That means the chemistry must be different. When I looked at the chemistry, I was one of the first in the world to realize it doesn't contain the same chemicals as the 50 species of frankincense you find in the world. Um, just before you guys leave, um, we just wanted to say thank you on behalf of everyone to um, Habayoto Samia, just because she's worked in the background tirelessly to make this event. So we want to give applause. <laughs> thank you so much. Right. Okay. Can we just say, you know, everybody worked hard to make this, and I really thank St Giles and our community, the ladies. They've done such a fantastic job. So we're Mashallah. really grateful. So thank you. But we shouldn't forget a very important person because we have Councillor Saeed Ibrahim. Ibrahim and yeah? if he wasn't a councillor and he wasn't Sorry. in the politics, we wouldn't be here today. So we have to all round of applause for Saeed Ibrahim. Our councillor. Thank you, Saeed. Thank you very much. Samria Holder, everybody. All right. Steve Doughty is in Canada and he said, I hope everything goes well. He sends his wishes and his greetings. We're over to the community centre, Butel Community Centre. So let's head down Butel Community Centre. <laughs> Wallahi, Marco Roy Ad Ban Kusalamaya, television Kagar and Kana Ad Ban Umahad Nakaya, we had Manta Deremia, Wuhan Horo Uga de In Cardiff, we had New Chogna, Mel An Horo Somali Lander Kuan Women, we had television Kikar and Kohel Kanela Choga, or House of Barla Monkey or Sub. Runti you had Deremia, Happy eighteen May Van Lea, Hadila Irado, Sana Double and Nine Itimado, or you know Delke Nikuridina. I am Ilahi Kabari, I shall love the man, so my lander can all have a high. Happy 18 May, shall I? Runti have flipped them, Kap Kalok, up to Abbe Isochi, the tea, Barlaman Kamesha, I woke up tea, and he didn't know even the lady in a dirty him, Bushad Somaliland, Gobel Kawilis. Well, he way bothered to have you, Hamlal and a headed bothered, so my lander Kuhalkan, who chose a Senada Abu Bodan, Rutina, Somali Lander, who have a hot year chair is good at Delki Halkan. Makohan Lola and Hirid Adudo, or on Chella is Alan Michael, or on Niki Ure, Somali Lander, because all the way, Maka Hirid Kilgo Adbu and Axei Halka Wahak is a good of Kurokul May or Ilachuga in Dublamasi Uina, a boss, Matamura Sabata Halkan, other boss who had Barlama Kaka, other Belkawa drank Haga. Kaira Adi. أي إنه واحد، وحن رنتي وحياة بفر بدن أو عندنا هرا وارك تشيلين أيام ما أرجعني مركب واحد رئيس تبرلان كله كله، وحن مدحدي ويلش كا أيام أيام لا صعب حضي أو كهذا شيء تبرلان كا 
ayego doniya in ay aad iyo aad taageero weyn siiyaan in Soomaaliland dalyeradi reer Soomaaliland oo wax bartay oo si wanaagsan u hadlaya oo naqiiraysiyeena waan la kulanay in reer Wales Soomaaliland waxa ay dad aad iyo aad progressive ah oo horumarka ka shaqeynaya Soomaaliland carruurtoodana wax barteen waalidkoodana ay wax bareen waa ummad runtii jirta ayaan leenahay dadana daahir tukaale oo kamida masuuliyiinta safaaradda Soomaaliland ayaa ka qayb qaatay munaasibadan balka waran weel ismaato wixii ka dhacay bismillaahir rahmaanir rahiim lama soo koobi karayo maanta xafladani weligeena maan arag sidoo noo kale waxa weeye maanta waxa ay mid la isku yimday dalyeero yar yar oo muuqtay ah tii waalidintood iyo soo wax bareen oo aad iyo aad u tababaran ayaa halkan qudbada biigana dheeriye ka ka jeediyay iyagoo maadooyinka farabadan ay barteen ka hadlayay waxa kale oo waxa kale oo ka hadlay muuqtay madaxdii oo dhan ba ka hadashay marka waxaan ku faraxsanahay tiifiga qaranka iyo safaradii oo dhan oo wal socota oo halkan faalay habi دين مي هل كان ما توحى كبد عي أدنى أرين ليابله والله وذا قيروضي محل لا قيروضي وحل لا قيروضي إن بالليرة الصومال اللانت إدل كن دجن يعهوت يا ريرة تدوبتشير كا تدوبتشير كا شري تدوبتشير كا علم غير برتان كل سنة ذا يقرح ذا ينظام كي كم موجدي وانو قيروضي وانو فرحني وحنا نشعران لهين سد أي دل كده أوش عليهين أيان أيان الله يابنا يجوا هذا كل دشوا هو يقول سمالة العرق أي حد لنا نجا أي أي سمالة لنت يقول لك خديه هين مركا واحد شغال ها إن غدا يدور واحد كده يشم مدن وواحد ما شاء الله والد كود أنا وجود عيني نسوي براسين وسوي كريان الحمد لله واحد دريم إن إن جنريشن عشوب أو إذا كهو شيء أد أصور دمتين مدريم إذا أقون إن إذا كلا وريج يسو الله فرحة آدي آدي آد وين بل يا له يا نيا مانتا وحن كل سوني وحن أرك هي شيل كل صوك عيا إنه نقد دون شيل كل شيء في عن كل كهري الحمد لله السلام عليكم دعوة يا هل كان مانتا لقوم كلا هارين إن وحن هل كان كلوا كل مي إن أحمد أروى أتجرن إنسان إنه أها ما تحدي أجسمه إن بنجي جمهورية الشمال اللان أحمد هل كان أيو إما كان مانتا وكقيب قادنا أي أحمد ما تم مناسبة دبار لما كان كذا عدو حيه أرين آدي آدو بلارن بالمركب وجوه رسهم بليدة آدي جو شعب كذا وسو شيء ديني يا كسرو تلفزيش كان كسمالي لنا آه بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم صلى الله على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله هم بلي وهم بلي وهم بلي وشعب كسمالي لنا شديد توين كمية سنة جودة دي اللي بيوصل دنات ما أنتي يا نورس ونقول نحور نمدينا ما أنتي يا نقول لي سنة إدقال كون حماة قرارة إيه سنة تي وينوه وقامين شيء نقول لي سنة الحمد لله رب العالمين إن أب بيرها سومال لا رب يسوي بعدين برعو إذا ما أنتوا أيقوا عن سدان إن الحرية جد اللي بيصون نقنا حرية دي نقلهم طي آدي أدمن وها باليانية وحنا وجود عين يا أن بتجليه إياه برواقه إياه بس فبيجي إسفهم إياه خلافي بتشروا له صور لما يجي سن بتجليه أو بتشني ماء قرن كسومال الآن هم ولا عضو سومال لا هم ولا عضو بل كور المناسبة ده ما تصيد ولا عضي مناسبة ده نروح ويا وحن وطلق الله عنا قدس كي يجي عرانه نحيا هلكن ده هران ويمي أو أو ضياء شاها إلا سومالي لان بروجرس في أسوسيات كان سمايني يو ويلس سومالي لان بريج برنامج لورنش روي سكولة ده يجي شام عضان سكول هني سامي رنت هلكن أبى بس واحد كمان ده هم يجي عروض كود بس هلكن إنه هلك أجيني سيد الكو صور برتان مركا وحوي برودت كيانو سمايني بان وادي يا زغفر حسان حيمان تيني لو ريجين هاوشي مركا وحنا توصل ساتاس علاقات كيانو او رين او بحني سومالي لاند ويلس بريتش انو دالاي دادكي او دالاي اي مان تيو ونسي ودان دي واحنا توصل مان تيني دام كدو ونظام دي هوري او اين دالي رضو اين نتوصان ولا شنمدو دي سومالي لمدو دي اسكو حد كيدا تاسا كيني سنة اعتراف كمركن كوميونتي جينا لأن عروب بابا بين ملك سوين خد على سيدة فلسطين لكن تاسا سوين أنه خد بها سيدة فلسطين تاينا يهين تاسو مالي لأنا يجا ينو كيني كذا اعتنار كوي إن شاء الله تعالى واني نسولو هل كان داوة ديال وحا إساق هناك قيب قاتل مراسبة دان عبد عبد الله سفير كسومال لأنه شو قد لكم بغرتو يدين قريس إن سعادة السفير بل وحد كورتا مراسبة دي هل كان ماتك عادي مراسبة دان إن آد يأد بيوغي مدل حقيقة ما هين تنوكلي 
كما أيدين دل كي يوكا كما أيدين ويوحا أي تنو غاركو أهيد دل نيرادة أه وحا خيالي أي لوشي جري أي فكر كأي كايستين سومالي لان أو مركي أي تاقين أي كوردونين أي بارين مد كدو ونكي وحي أي هيين أي كشاقين ان يجو او علن كودا يو نغن كودا يو دد كودا يو مدح دود الله كل مي ايا هل كان الله كل مي وحيا لا عجيب وان اد ياد وغيا من ايبان هل كان كل كل مي قلبت ما توا ما انت حوسك سيدي دي تبان كمي هم بليا دا قودا هان قرن كادو ديريسو ما انت سفي عم بدرر كي وقد عضي ما هاي تاهي مدنه وحن هم بليا ودريا جمهورية دا سومالي لان شعب كيدا دولة ديدا قلياشة مدحوينا مدحوينا كوحيقينكا عيدنكا غرنكا ايو الدمان ميلكا ستو اي جوغان با دلتكا يوكي اعنا با ستور كوا هاي كونكا ستو اي كت جوغان دلتكا يوكي نا همبليو ايانو ديريا مركا ما انتا وا مالي وين والله بيو صدن قورة دي سيديت ايو توانكا مي أحد بنك يا جماعة إلني يا سعادة السفير داو ذا هكوا واحد نقول دم هذا برنامج كأنه كسر ما إنه مجال هذا كادي فوانو أوري الدل مر أو إذن له إتاي نواركتنا عنو كلا هو ذا كل من السداء ينبدي جلي والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته.